Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth God's praise, to hear God's holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship God, let us sit in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. And your glory all the day long. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning. This is a song that Chris exhumed from the graveyard of 1970s music, and he passed it on to me, so I'm going to use it this morning. Um, it's the Covenant song, based on Psalm 89. If you know it, please join in. If you don't, please join in. <laughs> Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the up, upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. 
His work is full of majesty and splendor. And his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works. In giving them lands of the nation. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. Because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. To the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But everyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ask me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art smiling, do not pass me. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief, kneeling there in deep contrition, help my own. Savior, Savior. 
A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This Thursday, as we were concluding our speaker series, looking at American public life through the lens of sin and virtue, we were going out on a high note looking at the virtues of faith, hope, and love. And one of the things we were discussing was how those individuals who who have inspired each of us with the depth of their faith, hope, and love had this great depth, this strength, not because they had easy lives, but because they had been able to make it through great trials in times of adversity. So when they spoke about having hope against hope, for example, their words carried a lot of weight. And we recognized the authority behind those words and their witness. And Hank Aaron, Hank Aaron was mentioned in the midst of these conversations. In the tributes following his death, we have heard much about how he overflowed with grace. Yet, as columnist Jerry Brewer noted, behind that grace was restraint. On the inside, he was broken, raging, skeptical. People had threatened to kill him and terrorize his family, all because he was approaching Babe Ruth's record. He had risen from the Jim Crow South and become baseball royalty, only to realize it didn't matter how outstanding he performed or how classy, <clears throat> how classy he acted. He was still the enemy to some white people, and there were enough who thought this or tolerated this. 
to drain joy from his signature feet. <clears throat> it really made me see for the first time a clear picture of what this country is about, Mr. Aaron told the New York Times in 1994, 20 years after he had hit number 715. My kids had to live like they were in prison because of kidnap threats. And I had to live like a pig in a slaughter camp. I had to duck. I had to go out the back door of the ballparks. I had to have a police escort with me at all times. I was getting threatening letters every single day. All of these things have put a bad taste in my mouth and it won't go away. They carved a piece of my heart away. With all of this, Mr. Aaron still offered enough of himself to inspire others and to become an influential voice in challenging baseball to pursue greater equality. And when asked about his faith, he wrote, I need to depend on someone who is bigger, stronger, and wiser than I am. I don't do it on my own. God is my strength. Words spoken from one who spoke with authority. And we all can think of those in our lives who through their own challenges have spoken with authority and have served as witnesses to that greater strength. I think of my friend Tom asking for prayer some years ago for a mutual friend of ours, Ed. Ed apparently had been battling with an addiction to alcohol for a number of years, and it had gotten fairly severe and was really affecting his health. He had tried a few AA meetings here and there, but just couldn't seem to stick with it. And one night he was found on his kitchen floor, apparently after much drinking and an ambulance was called. And it was in the ambulance that he experienced tremendous grace. The EMT in the back of that ambulance was someone he had recognized from the few AA meetings that he had gone to. And so he recognized the great authority that was present when the EMT said to him, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. Our gospel reading this morning picks up directly from last week's reading in which Jesus called the first disciples. We are still in the first chapter of Mark, still full of firsts. So this calling out of the unclean spirit and healing of the man in the synagogue is Jesus's first miracle. I do not think it is coincidence that Mark has this as Jesus's first miracle. Jesus is showing, Mark is showing Jesus's tremendous power and authority. And it is the unclean spirits who are the first to recognize that Jesus is the Holy One of God. Peter won't figure this out until chapter 8. And much of the early chapters of Mark are unpacking Jesus' first sermon, which we heard last week. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus' healing miracles of these early chapters are showing us what this kingdom of God looks like. We heard a few weeks ago of Jesus' baptism by John in the River Jordan, and Jesus was blessed and baptized blessed and baptized with the Holy Spirit descending upon him as God proclaimed to him, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Now, Mark contrasts that experience with that of this man possessed by an unclean spirit. And this spirit is definitely not telling this man that he is a beloved one of God, and certainly 
not that God is pleased with him in any way. These unclean spirits can take many forms, not only the version of demons of horror movies. I believe at the heart of these unclean spirits is the ability to curse rather than bless, to destroy rather than build up, to sow seeds of hatred and contempt rather than of love, to create isolation and division rather than drawing together. And these forces seeking to curse, to destroy, to divide have always been with us, whether in forces we struggle with within ourselves or forces outside of ourselves. And they have always been with us through racism, white supremacy, as well as in such exhausting drives to be right all of the time. But over these past years, we have become, they have become much more visible to all of us. Not just those who have been bearing the direct and personal pains of these forces for so long, for too long, but much more visible to all of us. But in making themselves more visible and crying out those forces which seek to deny all of God's people, all that God hopes and intends for each and every one of us, as these forces are seen by more of us, they can be called out. And that calling out and that work needs to be done in community. And thanks be to God for all those we can look to in our own lives, in this church community right here and now who have shown us what it means to live through trials and adversity and still hold on to hope. Hope for a better world for our children and for our children's children. And all this work needs to be done calling on our higher authority, calling on our God. And dear Lord Jesus, please help us in this work. And may it be done with true faith and hope and love. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God. And listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. 
Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, let us pray for all who need the cleansing power of the Holy One of God. We pray for the earth and for all people. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for all people and especially for those in any kind of need through famine, war, or natural disaster. Make your ways known upon the earth. O oh God, your saving power among all peoples. Help us to lighten their burden and to seek justice and peace for all. God of love, grant our prayer. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that all who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of people, and in holiness of life. Strengthen our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Carly, our priests Joan and Jim, and your whole church in the service of Christ, that we may be witness to your compassion. We pray for our confirmands, Alex, Ava, Carter, and Sophia. We pray also for those in authority, especially Joe, Kamala, Phil, and Sheila. God in love. Grant our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit especially those on St. Mark's prayer list and prayer chain. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bless those who care for them. We remember all those who have died in Christ, especially Mara, John, Walter, Michael, Paul, Catherine, Juana, Sonia, Trish, and Inez. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. God of love. Grant our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for our ministries. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Amy, Jason, Eilina, Lauren, Milagros, Jane, and Nick, and Joe and Pam. God of love, grant our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Mark, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Accept these prayers, we pray, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear God, we pray for strength during these unprecedented times. We look to you for guidance. May you empower us to find a way to get through this. Please heal those who are sick and take care of those who we lost. Heaven has gained many angels. 
God protect our children, helping them through the challenge of our time. Help them understand that we will get through this. Protect the people who are suffering. Protect those with businesses that are struggling. Protect our nurses, doctors, and all who are on the front lines taking care of the sick. You are our God and have done wonderful things creating a beautiful earth and heaven. Preserve the beauty, minds, and souls within. We thank you and we love all you do. Amen. Amen. God, our teacher, speaking with holy authority, liberating us from the forces of evil, hear the prayers we offer this day and give us courage as we proclaim your truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, you un unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, you may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know this song. Join in.
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.